Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. Uh, my name's Ben. Um, apologies, we're a little bit later on today um, if you're watching us live. Uh, just a couple of techn technical issues we had to sort before we get going. Um, we're back on the scroll saw today. So we're going to make, um, we're doing a bit of 3D cutting. Um, we're going to make a little puzzle box. Um, so it's quite a dinky little thing. Um, it's got this little pin here, which we can remove. And then it's got this sliding lid to reveal a little box. Okay. Quite a cute little thing. Um, nice for little keepsakes. Um, it's about the same size as a ring box. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice little, little project. Easy peasy. And we're going to go through that and show you how it's done. I'll just get this pin back in here and pop that to one side. Um, we've got a nice bit of sapili on the on the um, on the scroll saw here. So it, it is a very simple puzzle to put back together. I was just struggling with that one there. Um, but this is what we're going to cut. Um, it's about two inches, so we're kind of coming to the limit of what um, what our scroll saw will cut. Um, we got a fifty mil um, depth of cut on these machines, um, and you'll find that's quite common across a lot of scroll saws. Okay, um, there are some where this bottom arm's a little bit closer to the bottom of the table. You get slightly um, a bigger cut, um, but for for the kind of general scroll saws, it's usually around about fifty mil. Okay, um, so all I got here, like I say, is 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 kind of like a two inch um, block all the way around, um, or fifty mil. This is um, a little template that I've just found online. Um, this is uh, Steve Good. Um, if you're into scroll sawing, I really recommend that website. Um, check out uh, Steve Good. I think it's the Good Scroll Sawing. Um, there are zillions of brilliant patterns on there, um, all free to use. Um, and uh, yeah, a really great resource for us, um, us scroll sawers. Okay. So, first job, I just need to stick my little template on. All right. Um, so I've got a bit of copy decks here. This is like a rubber glue uh, copy decks. And what we're going to do, I might just get a bit of wood so we're not getting glue on the on the bed of our scroll saw. We don't want to have to clean up any mucky bits like that. So a bit of this copy decks. And this is really easy when you want to come to peel it off. Okay, this kind of holds together in its own little layer. And, um, and yeah, when you peel it off, it doesn't kind of sink into the wood like a, um, like a PVA would. Um, so we want to get a nice bit of coverage on that. I'm not trying not to put too much on. And trying to take it right to the edge. When the scroll saw is cutting, it tends to pick up the edges of the paper and they kind of flap around. It can be a bit annoying while we're working. So back in there with the brush. And I'm just looking at the grain orientation. We want all this grain um, running up and down through the box, give it a bit of um, integral strength when it's um, all together. And I'm just checking. This key here is the lid. So I'm going to put that on the end grain. doesn't really matter which way around it goes. Say if you had a particularly pretty piece or you had a little knot you want to show off, um, that's when the positioning of this template uh, might change. But this is a fairly straightforward or, or, or similar on all sides. There's no kind of pretty bits that we want to highlight. So that's stuck on. All right. Good. So that's our template. Um, I'm going to bring this closer to the camera so you get a really good idea of, of how it looks. Um, let me just get that to focus. So we've got the lid on the top there, and you can see the little key um, that we're going to cut in a moment. Um, but you can see that oh, it's almost like a puzzle piece on top there, the lid when we cut it. Our first job is to cut this bottom, um, the bottom of the box off. Okay. Um, I've gone with a number five modified geometry blade. These are my kind of go-to blades, a really nice, nice thing to use. 
um, nice and free cutting. We've got that um, that kind of spacing between the teeth, um, which allows for uh, waste clearance. Because um, on a cut like this, on a piece of timber that sort of size, I know it, it's small, but we're scaled down because we're on the scroll saws. Um, there's parts of that blade that are never going to leave the project. Okay, meaning all the waste that we're cutting, the, the dust as we go along, are getting trapped in between the teeth. Um, and that can kind of compact and stuff in there if, we're, um, if we've got too many teeth on the blade. Okay, so like I say, this is the standard um, kind of modified geometry number five. So I'm just finding my little line here. Okay, we're going to cut this, um, the bottom of the box off first, because the key, this part here, um, doesn't go right through the bottom. So we want to cut that off first. Um, safety first, going to put my specs on. Okay, we don't want any little chips flying up um, into our eyes. We need to protect our eyes. And away we go. So MVR switch on the back of the machine here. And I'm going to bring the speed right down when we first turn it on. And just make sure that we're not clashing on our guarding here, okay? Now, when I came to, um, to, to put this, um, to have a little practice earlier, when I turned the machine on, I had this arm was clashing on the guarding, okay? Um, and, you know, it, it seems as though it's not gonna cut that full 50 mil. Um, so what I had to do is just to um, loosen off the blade clamps. I brought this arm up through the tensioner. Um, so we're gripping on just the ends of the blade, either end of the blade. And that gave me that extra, well, there's a good 10 mil in that. Um, so I could bring that guarding up. And um, so the arm is not fouling on that guarding. Okay, so if you turn the machine on and you find it clattering on, on your guarding, that's the first thing to check, that you're, um, that you're holding the um, blade almost on its kind of extremities at either end. Okay, good. So let's have a little cut. Let's um, bring that away from the machine. I'm just going to get myself comfortable. And we're just going to cut through at the bottom of the box here. Now, with a depth of cut like this, we don't want to be feeding too fast, okay? We want to go nice and slow. Um, and allow that waste to kind of clear, all right? So, machine's going on. I'm gonna increase the speed to just over halfway, okay? That way we're not putting too much strain on the machine. We've got a little bit of dust building up here. So I'm just going to engage that blower. That's what it's for, it's just to clear that, um, the sight line. Um, so you might find with uh, a project this deep as well that, um, that it might try and grab. we will try and grab the project and bring it up to that, um, that piece of guarding or the hold down clamp as they sometimes call it. Um, so I'm holding it on its sides, and I'm putting a firm pressure down onto the table. And just gently, I'm not forcing it, allowing the blade to cut along that line. I've got a, more force down on the table than force feeding that onto the blade. Okay? So it's a nice... Gentle, controlled cut. And we're just giving it time to do its thing, allow those teeth to work, and just clear that material. Now, if I keep going like this, I'll soon be into my thumb. So, once we get a bit clearer, I'm happy with the kind of pace I'm going. Um, once we get a bit closer to that end of that cut, I'm just going to switch my grip so there's no 
chance of that blade popping out and just catching me on the thumb. Nice and slow. And again, as we get to the end of that line, I'm just letting off the pressure. And allow it to cut its way out, not force it through. You'll get a cleaner finish. You'll get less breakout. Let me just sever those little fibers in there. So you're just hanging on a smidge. I'm going to come from this side. Just peeking over the top. And picking up on that line. Good. So that's our bottom of our box. Okay. And it's important that that one comes off first. Um, and because when we cut this key, um, that doesn't want to come right through the bottom here. Okay. Good. So we're live today. Any questions you've got, um, you know, please send them in. Um, we've got Colwyn on the questions today. Um, Steph's looking after us on the cameras. Um, so any questions, uh, we can we can answer those as best as we can as we go along. Okay. So what's next? We need to cut our um, our key out of here. All right. Um, again, we still got to cut this lid, um, but we want that key to go through the lid. That's what holds the lid together and holds the box together. All right. Good. Okay. So we got a question. Well, not so much a question, but a, a statement here from, from Robert was saying a little bit of advice. He said, Ben, if you cover your pattern with genuine sellotape, it melts as you go and, and creates a lubricant. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes I use um, I use a masking tape and the um, the adhesive actually works as a, as a lubricant through the cut. So, yeah, great tip. Thank you. Okay, we've got another, another one. Another one from, the, from a regular here. So Maria up in Wales, um, she said you can wrap it in masking tape and use Brit stick as well yeah. to fix the pattern, um, cheap and easy to remove. Absolutely. So I find I have used Brit stick before. Um, I find, um, especially on those kind of open porous timbers, um, that some of that gunk kind of gets in there. And that, I mean, you can sand that off, um, but... I'm almost going with um, the, the, the outside of the box is almost a, has got a finish on it. I've, I've sanded it to a degree where I'm kind of happy with that finish. Um, so if I was to uh, use a Pritt stick, sometimes that gets in the pores and, and it, it annoys me when I'm trying to, um, to put finish on it because that will also resist an oil or something like that. If you wanted to oil this, um, you know, any glue in the pores there um, will, res will resist the finish. Okay. Good, but top tips. Thanks, everyone. So back to it. Going to cut this key. We've got a little less depth now, but it's still pretty a pretty deep cut. So just cutting along our line here. Quite a quick change in direction. And I want to try and keep that sharp if I can. So a quick change in direction there. And then just following the line of that key up through there to that point. And then I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to backtrack and then come at it from a different direction and get back through my cut. That's good. So the other line here, just picking up on the line on my template. Again, nice and slow and controlled. And I'm going to turn that corner and then keep going from there. Again, quite a tricky thing to grip um, as we're cutting. That should be it. And then back out there. So it's still grabbing on somewhere, so I need to just um, adjust that. I'm just going to pop the machine off for a second and just see if I can get back up to that spot.
And I just... Oh, it's just holding on in there. One more. And that'll be our key. Preferably, you want to do this in one. You'll get a better finish on that inside uh, there. Good. So that's our key. All right, you can just see that slide out. And I've tried to keep that um, nice and angular, okay? If you round these off, there's a potential for this key to kind of um, turn or twist in the hole. Okay, but that's our key. We can pop that to one side. That's the kind of pin that holds the lid on. I'm going to put those both over on my table here, out the way. Um, so we haven't got anything to kind of worry about, um, you know, potentially coming back onto the blade. So back on with the machine. I'm going to cut this lid off now. Okay. Um, that's going to take away our reference to, to the box, but... Um, you know, that is um, something we can we can sort out really easily in a minute. So we're almost like cutting a puzzle piece now. Again, we're going to go nice and slow with that feed rate. I'm just bringing the project up to the blade until I feel it engage. And then again, nice and slow. We're just going to cut this lid. So it sounds like we've got a couple of scroll scrollers uh, watching this afternoon. Let us know if there's any projects you want to see or any projects that you're doing at home. That'd be really cool to see some of the stuff that you guys are doing. Gives us a bit of inspiration as well when we see your work. Me and Colwyn have just been through the Make It In March competition entries. There's some lovely scroll saw stuff on those. The guys at home making some lovely, lovely projects. So nice and quick round this. Quite an, a quick return on that one. A little chicane. So nearly there with the lid. I'm just releasing some of the pressure back off the blade. I felt I was pushing a little bit too hard there. And if you do that, you know, you can bend where the blade is. It can kind of change direction in the cut. Nice and slow through this last little section. Again, quite a tricky thing to grip. And we're letting the blade cut its way out. We don't want it pinging out and kind of tearing the grain. Good. So that's our lid. And you can see that waste where it's built up inside. You can see that. Now we're quite lucky this is quite um this is quite a kind of dusty timber. Um this is a sapili or something like that come off a off the bearer of, of when we get our wood delivered. Um, so it's quite a dusty uh, material. Say that was a pine or something like that, you could find it becomes quite resinous. Um, and all that dust kind of fuses together and it can stick inside the cut. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, so this, um, uh, this is, can you, show, can you show us the way to adjust the table to 90 degrees to the blade, please? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've done that already before we before we got going. Let me just have a little clean down here. Um, so to find 90 degrees, we need a square. Um, so I've got a little engineer's square here. These are really useful because they, um, they'll sit under our guarding. You know, if you can imagine a bigger square, we're going to have troubles getting to, um, to what we want to look at. Um, so 
this machine um, has a tilting arm. Okay, so if we, what I'm going to do, if I just come back on this camera a little touch, oh, excuse me, we can see underneath the machine there, um, this little Bristol locking lever, and we've got a little kind of rack and pinion going on underneath that. And you can see the way that tilts the head on this um, tray. This is the uh, 406 SS. OK, um, so lovely little machine. Um, so the tilt on this one is on the arm rather than the table. OK, which means um, the you know, the table stays where it is um, and, and the arm tilts over. So you don't have to be working, at, you know, potentially 45 degrees because um, that can be a bit awkward as well. Um, so the table stays flat on this one and the, the arm gives us our angle. All right. You'll find something very similar on the other machines, um, which will tilt the table instead of the arm. OK, um, to get this at 90, I'm just bringing that as close to the blade as I can. And although it is marked on here, we've got a zero underneath here. Um, you know, they can be relied on. But to get super accuracy, I would use something like a square. And I'm eyeballing it down there. And I'm aligning the side of the square to the blade. All right. And then just lock that off. I'm looking for a nice even gap all the way along. And then lock that off. That's on a Bristol locking lever. And that ain't going anywhere now. All right. So that's your 90 degrees. Sometimes you might get a bit of play forwards and backwards. <clears throat> now, on this machine, you can adjust it at the back and twist the motor to allow that arm to come forward and backwards. Okay. On, um, on your regular kind of, um, so looking at the craft or, you know, any other makes of, of scroll saws out there, they haven't always got that adjustment. So it would be to loosen off our blade clamps and actually bring the blade forward and backwards. Um, you've only really got about five mil of um, movement in that clamp, uh, front to back. Um, same on the bottom. Um, so that's how you would get your um, 90 degrees that away. Okay, so we're looking now down through that plane. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question. Um, so we've got another one here. So, yeah, this again from Maria. She said, Ben, um, last time I asked how to show an easy way to thread the blade through a small hole, you lifted mm -hmm. the saw arm. Can you show us how to do this um, if the arm doesn't lift? Um, so, yeah, we can. I'll, I'll, I'll get another machine out. I'll get the craft one out in a moment, and we'll look at a couple of different ways we can do that. I've got one just over there, um, and I'll, what I'll do, um, if we carry on, I'll get what we, we're going to do here finished, and then we can look at that afterwards. But, yeah, good good suggestion. Um, again, coming up to these sort of trade machines, um, you, can, you can take this off, and this whole arm moves out of the way, so you can put your project down on top of it. Um, sometimes we haven't got that option, that the arm is fixed, um, you know, when it comes to the craft machines. Um, all of this is fixed in into the body here. OK, while we're talking about the difference of the machines, you know, we, we talked about the arm tilting. Um, we've got that mo adjustment in the motor. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of little um, bits and bobs on, on one of these trades machines that really kind of elevate it. And that's why, um, you know, there's a there's a big difference in cost. Um, there's there's loads of nice little things, um, you know, the exposed blade clamps underneath um, that that kind of. You know, I, I had a question recently of, uh, you know, what is the big difference between um, the, the two machines? Um, and there's no big difference. They'll all do the same job. Um, it's the little differences on, on, uh, on a machine like this um, that really kind of elevate it. Okay, so yeah, Maria, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, I'll grab my little craft um, scroll saw out and we will um, I'll pull my table over and we'll have a, a look at that. Good stuff. 
Okay, so we've done our lid. We've cut our key and we've cut the bottom off. Now we need to cut this hollow here. I've cut my, um, my little lid off on that one. So we will have to draw that back on. Um, the wall thickness doesn't really matter. Um, obviously, the thinner the walls go, um, that is going to be a little bit more um, fragile. Um, but it's going to look a little bit more refined. Just excuse me a moment while I just grab a pencil. Good. Sorry, I should have put that on my desk already. So what I'm going to do here, if we come overhead on that one, lovely, thanks, Steph. Um, I'm just going to use my finger as a guide and just draw a, a little line around our box here. And we're going to do just what we were talking about a moment ago. We're going to drill a hole in this and we're going to thread the blade through to, to remove the interior of this box, all this waste that sort of sits inside this box. And then give myself a little bit more room around that key. I'll come in a bit too close. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see. It's quite a dark timber, this Sapili. But hopefully you'll can, you can make out these lines. I'm just freehanding that onto there. All right. Don't necessarily need it in there. But I'm just going to give myself a little marker in case we start to drift. Good. So we want to drill this. And again, this is a, quite a small little project. You know, potentially that can twist in your hand. So I'm going to use just a vise, just be extra safe. A little vise off the pillar drill. It's hollow through here, so we can drill right through this. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to bring it slightly off center so I can drill and not worry about hitting the bottom of the vise. You can see that nicely gripped. And I've just put a little board in underneath to stop us drilling our scroll saw table. So I'm going to pop the, um, the drill in the corner there. Um, drill speed is up on the number two. We've got a one and two here. Um, for drilling, we're going to go with the number two. I want to go nice and fast. And I'm just going to see if I can get a bit more comfortable on the table there. And then get the drill running. A gentle downwards pressure. And you see it started to pick up some of that wood from underneath. I've got a little fleck of the tulip there. So that tells me we're right the way through. Perhaps not. It's just picked up a slightly different color. Probably come off the drill bit. So back in it goes. Let's get that drilled right the way through. Good, and I felt it drop through them. Good. Let's again pop that to one side. I'm going to come in a bit closer on this camera here so you get a better idea of what we're doing. Good. Drill to one side too. Now, I've got a hole right the way through that now, um, and I'm going to thread the, the blade through that one. So that sits nicely on the table. Um, and like we were saying before, um, the, this arm comes up, take the tension off the belt, off the blade, I'm sorry, and then undo our clamp here, and this whole arm just lifts out the way. Okay, really nice feature on this saw. Okay, so we've gone through the hole there, just going to drop that arm back down, and then let's just grip on the end of that blade. Remember, we've still got quite a 
chunky piece of timber here, or comparatively chunky for, for a scroll saw. And just get that up nice and tight. We've got our quick tension through our lever here, and then we're just gonna put some tension back on it. I always give them an extra little tweak, make sure we're not gonna ping off uh, the blade when we put the tension on. Sounds good. So away we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and pick up on this line here. Okay, so we're trying to pick up on a little line that's coming and showing the, the wall there. Again, it's quite a dark piece of timber, so it's tricky to see, but I can see it from where I am. And you'll, you'll see it once it's all cut. And I'm coming in at a nice gentle angle. I'm not going straight for that line and then changing direction. I'm just gonna pick up on that line at a nice gentle angle. So it's starting to pick the pro project up. That's what that uh, clattering is. Um, because I'm just struggling to get my grip on this with, um, you know, with the angle that we're going at. So again, nice and slow. Up to that corner, and then I can swing this around. Oh, there goes my blade. Um, so, new blade. That was my number five. So I put a bit of welly on that. It felt like it was getting a bit blunt. Um, and I'm just gonna grab my pliers. No, I'm not, it came out. Got the luck of the gods with us. So, number five, modified geometry. Later, I've got my little Pegasus pack here. Um, Coming in a pack of 12. Um, so if, like me, you snap blades every now and then, you've always got a spare. Um, quick and easy job just to change that over. I was giving that a bit too much welly. A bit too much um, force feeding it onto the blade. So we should have another little bit of the blade in underneath. Let's get rid of that. And then just bring that through. So these modified geometry blades, um, most of the teeth face down, but we have got a few that cut upwards on the upstroke. So blade in the bottom. Let's just get down there and have a proper look. Where we're grabbing it, because remember we want that full depth of cut. Good. Again, lift the arm, project goes on, and then we can drop that arm back down. Um, not quite reaching where I want it to on the blade, so I'm gonna adjust the tension, allowing that arm down, and then we're gonna grip onto that there. Okay. And this is a harder piece of timber. Usually I do a lot of this stuff in, um, in pine because it's just a little bit more free cutting. Um, remember I said earlier we had that fouling on there. I think that's what's happening. No, we're good. We're good. So where were we? We were at this little corner here. Just about to turn the corner. And that's the risk that it will pick up and it will put some tension on the blade where it shouldn't be. So again, this is cutting a lot nicer now, this um, nice fresh new blade. 
We're just coming up to that corner. We're going to stop there and I'm going to twist the project. So we're pivoting almost on that blade. Nice straight line along here. So I think what's happening is the dust, like we said at the beginning, the dust is gathering in between those teeth. So I'm just backing off the cut a touch and then start again. There we go. To our corner and then through 90 degrees, we're going to cut along this front face. Bringing it around just to match up with that diagonal where the key is. That's good. And then we're going to bring that around there. I'm using the waist there just to change the angle. Oops, coming a bit close on that one. And nice and gently, slowly going through this cup. There we are in our corner. Let's swing that around. Nice, firm grip. And then just come down through here. Then our cuts should meet. There we are. So that's all the cutting done. Okay, so we've got another question. From wouldn't it be nice? Um, to make it easier for a novice user of the scroll saw, would it be, or could you drill three other holes in each corner um, to make it easier to get around the corners? Yeah, totally. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you put, propped a little um, drill hole in each one of these corners, you could then travel to each one of those holes. And then if you didn't want that rounded look that the drill hole, uh, that the drill uh, will give you, um, you can always um, just come in and, and tidy up those corners um, coming from two directions, two cuts intersecting to give you a really kind of, um, you know, sharp corner. All right. This for me is just like a little kind of trinket uh, box. Um, and I quite like, I know sometimes it seems like an excuse. I quite like that hand um, uh, kind of hand cut look uh, where we've got a little little wave here and there it gives you um it gives it a nice little bit of character you can tell it's handmade um and that's what we're going for so what am i doing here i'm taking this box off so again that can come up out of the way and you'll see the interior of the box will just come out so this is where we're getting our trouble with uh, with cutting, if we come overhead, all right, we've got all this dust here, and that's all just sitting in between the teeth, and it's not allowing it to cut. They're kind of compressing against there. So, I think what's happened, we've got a slight belly on it as we went. Okay, so it's kind of bellied out, um, and it made it just a little bit difficult to. Um, to remove from the, the box there. But that's what we've got. Um, saying that, let's bring this up to the camera again. Let's go over to camera uh, two. I'm um, sorry, we're already on it. Let's have a look at the finish on that. Okay, that's straight off a saw cut. Really good. We've got a little bit of scorching here, but that's fine. We can tidy that up with... Um, with abrasives and things. Um, 
But yeah, really nice, clean finish off that modified geometry blade. Okay, so let's take off our um, template. So remember, we use that copy dex glue. Comes off real nice, really easy peasy. Once you get it going, just to pull that off. Okay, so while we're doing that, we've got another question. Uh, from Maria. Um, Maria is just asking about heights for seating. So it looks like you're a little bit hunched over. Is that seat you, the one that you would choose or are you um, no, this, high? <laughs> well spotted. So this is uh, no, this is just a stool I've grabbed off the off the, out the side of the room here. Preferably I'll be a little bit lower down. Um, and also you can angle the um, the stands on these. So if I wanted to, I could kick the stand off at an angle. And give me that, you know, that kind of bird's eye view that you need when cutting um, without changing the height of the seat too much. But definitely make sure you're comfortable. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, whenever, you, especially if you're sat here for a long time doing a bigger project than this, um, you know, say you're doing a big puzzle or something like that, and you're, you're, you're spending a lot of time at the machine, uh, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you've got the right height. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of stooping a little bit, and after a while, that will really tell on your back. So let's just align the the grain back with this. Should have put a mark on this, really, shouldn't I? So that looks about right there. That's good. Um, last little bit of the template, and we're just going to glue this on. We're going to use a PVA this time. Okay. So let's get rid of our last little bits here. And I'll just roll that off with my thumb. Good. So let's get a bit of glue. Um, the type on red or the original. And I'm going to put that around the kind of rim of the bottom of the box. Just want to get rid of any excess dust on the top there that might stop it or act as an interface so it's not actually gluing the two pieces of wood together you're gluing a load of dust together okay so that's going there so let's say a little bit of glue around the rim a little bead not too much we don't want it you know Lurging out the sides when we clamp this. Just a little, a little bit of glue. Good. Now you could clamp this in your um, in your bench vise. You could clamp it, um, you know, in any kind of G clamp or anything really. Um, I'm going to use. Sorry, I'm, I've lost the orientation of this again. Um, I'm going to use just a little solo clamp. There we go. So he's going on there. Then expect to have a little bit of cleanup. Okay, a little bit of sanding afterwards if you've got any kind of breakout where we come out of some of those cuts. Okay. So, little solo clamp. And I'm just going to grip it in there and just apply some pressure. Okay. Make sure that it's nicely aligned. Just going to back off that one, squeeze it in again. And I'm just feeling with my fingertips if there's any kind of discrepancies. All right. And then really, once that's dried, um, we've got our little pin that goes in here. Um, the lid goes on first and the, the pin drops through. I want to show you a couple that I've already made. Um, Allow that a couple of hours to dry um, before we fiddling around with it too much. Um, here's a little gold one I've made. And again, let's let's come up to the camera with this. This is our our puzzle box. All right, and you can see I've done a little um, texture on this using pyrography. Okay, um, and what it is is we've got a little pin here that just slides up, and you take that one out, and then this slides off to reveal 
your little box. Okay. And all I've done with that one is use that um, pyrography um, texturing technique, which we went through a few weeks ago. Um, you can always check that out if you missed it. Um, it's still all up on our YouTube channel. Um, and that's a bit of verdigris, um, the verdigris paste, and then with a little bit of the gold um, gilt cream on top. All right, it gives a really nice, it doesn't quite come up on camera there, but it gives a really nice kind of look uh, to the box. Okay, that kind of repeating pattern. And then inside, that's just a bit of um, iridescent paint. Again, it gives it that kind of metallic look, like a little treasure chest or something. It's going to put some little treasures in there. All right. So that's what you should end up with. Um, decorate these however you like. Um, also, worth noting, I've just put a little nick in the bottom of our um, key there. A little nick just to get your nail in to lift it, because sometimes it can be a painter to, to, um, to get that one out. So the way we would do that is just get your key and just put a little tiny nick, get a knife in there and just take away a tiny bit of material so then you can get your nail in and just push that out. Okay. So that's our puzzle boxes. Um, I like to go on to that with pyrography. On that Sapili one, I would probably use... Um, just an oil because it's such a, a nice uh, kind of rich color to it and um, so i would then sand that back um, once the glue's dried and then yeah just apply a bit of oil and wipe off the extra uh, um, the excess i should say okay i'm gonna do a little bit of reshuffling now i'm gonna get another machine out so we can have a look at how we um how we uh, change the blade oh sorry was it it was tilt the table for maria was it um, change the blade? Change the blade. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just unplugging my scroll saw here. A little bit of um, shuffling around to do. It won't be a minute though. Um, I'm just going to pull it on this table here, I think. So the lovely trade machine coming out the way. And. Excuse me for this. I'll come and get the machine. Lovely. Thank you, Colin. Good man. Okay, good. Thank you for reminding. Thanks, Steph. Um, so let's drill a hole through something. Oh, we've got a little hole through this one. So um, very similar on this machine. Let me see if I can get it on that camera so you can actually see what I'm doing here, Maria. Sorry, just a quick, quick little jiggle around. But it's lovely to be able to react to these questions and we've got all the gear here to do it. Um, so that's why we you know, strive to, to make sure we understand these things and that you're happy with how we're, we're showing them. So on this machine, we have got um, uh, again, a little pair of clamps come together and just grip onto, um, onto the blade here. Okay. So you've got your tensioning knob still in the same place, uh, at the back of the machine, at the back of the arm there. And we just want to loosen that one off. So we've got a little bit of slack in our blade here. Just grab my... little hex key here and undo that one okay now our blade is free um, the way I would do it is to load that on from the top so it's going through that hole and into there let's get a bit closer on that sorry about this folks we just want to give you a good idea of how this is going to work. So we undid our blade from the top here. Okay. We put it through the project. So you can see it's now through that hole. 
and we then pop it there, pressure down on the top here, and then we can clamp that blade back up. Okay. Then you just need to put your tensioning back on. Sometimes if the timber is in contact, you won't get that nice ping. But that's it, really. Um, if you had those blocks, those kind of um, uh, blocks that will change your uh, pinned machine into a, a pinless one, um, that can be a little bit more tricky. What I do, um, and there's no easy way, there's no that kind of um, easy way really. Um, what I tend to do is get it hooked on at the bottom and I've got um, little spring clamps that I use. We've usually got a couple kicking around, something similar to this. Okay, there's a little spring clamp um, what I would do is get that bottom block on because that's the one that's going to be a real pain, okay? And use a bit of upwards force to hold that bottom one on, okay? So you've got your block in under there and then grab it with something, all right? Now that can't then fall back down through the machine, okay? Because what normally happens, if you've got your bottom block on, um, you know, you start putting the project on top of that and this whole blade and the block, it falls down in here and you have to get your magnet out and fish it out and all that sort of stuff. But using something like this or even a clothes peg um, can really, really help. Um, you then get your project, slip it over there, um, put your clamp on top, then hook it on to this little line here. Like I say, it is a bit of a fiddle. And there's no kind of easy way to do it. But you can do all sorts to um, change the clamping system on these machines. Um, there's there's these blocks that you can buy to um, to convert your uh, your machine. Um, so yeah, there's there's all sorts you can do um, if you wanted to kind of upgrade the the clamping system. Okay. So I think really that's about it for today. Um, little puzzle box there we showed you. Um, again, that's um, looking at um, kind of 3D cutting. Um, we've got lots more of that to show you um, over the coming weeks. Lots of little things we make in the 3D cut. Do lots of these little kind of tiny little uh, reindeer. So we can, uh, we had to go at them at Christmas. Um, and I've started carving a few fish and things. So I've got um, this little... Um, kind of whale shark um, that we wanted to show you. Um, and that's roughed out on the on the scroll saw, not the fins, so they weren't part of it. But certainly that body, we've got 50 mil um, thickness, um, give us a really nice kind of blank and starting point to get carving from. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Come back tomorrow. Uh, Colwyn's going to be turning lots of toys. So we've got spinning tops and, and all sorts of cool stuff uh, Colwyn's going to be showing you. Um, Woodworking Wisdom here at Axminster Tools. We'll see you soon.